أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على خاتم النبيين والمرسلين محمد بن عبد الله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحابته أجمعين ومن استنى سنته مهتدى بهديهم وتبعهم بخير وإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد The topic today is العرض على الله العرض على الله to be presented to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yawm al qiyam How people will be presented to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yawm al qiyam Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said Yawma izin tu'radun la takhfa minkum khafiya In yawm al qiyam yawm izin in that day you will be presented لا تخفى منكم خافية Nothing of you will be hidden Nothing physically and nothing from your minds that you have in your minds and nothing from your deeds Everything will be presented Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said reported by Abu Musa al-Ash'ari radiallahu anhu يعرض الناس يوم القيامة ثلاث عرضات فأما عرضتان فجدال ومعاذير وأما الثالثة فعند ذلك تطير الصحف في الأيدي فآخذ بيمينه وآخذ بشماله نبي صلى الله عليه وسلم said people will be presented to Allah سبحانه وتعالى يوم القيامة three times three times two times they will be able to argue for themselves and provide excuses. And the third one will be the serious one. Before it, they will get their books. Some will, will get by their right hand and some will get by their, in their left hand. Some will get in their right hand وَآخِذٌ بِشِمَالِ Others will get in their left hand. And the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in another hadith describing more, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, يُعْرَضُ النَّاسُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ ثَلَاثَ عَرَضَاتِ People will be presented to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on three times. فأما المرة الأولى فيدفعون عن أنفسهم ويقولون لم لم يبلغنا الأنبياء. In the first time, it will be for Muslims and kuffar everyone. And the kuffar will say, will defend themselves, saying that the prophets did not give us the message. And some of them will say, no prophets have came to us. They will lie. They, they just want to be saved from Jahannam. So they will try all means. And lying will be their first, uh, uh, their first method. We didn't have any prophets. We didn't hear about Allah. In the second, in the second, they will confess and Apologize, ask for forgiveness. And those who did sins, they will said, we did it by mistake. It was not my fault. It was a lot of fitna, this is why I did zina. It was everyone doing it, so this is why I got riba. I saw everyone taking it, so I took it also. Uh, Many other things, like I was living in a Kafir country and some sheikh told me that it is not haram to sell pork to Kafirs. This is why I did. I didn't find any other job other than, other than this haram job. So I, uh, I, I was out of choices, out of options. So people will, will uh, argue and provide excuses. So in the first 
time, they will deny. No, we didn't do. No prophets came to us for the kuffar. And the second, yes, we did, but we did for so and so and so, provide excuses. Uh, and the third time, after the second time, they will be sitting in Ard al Mahshar, in the place of gathering, and the Suhuf, uh, the books, will be flying, uh, will be flying from under the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and they will fall in the hands of people, right hand or left hand, right hand or left hand. After this, they will be presented again to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with their books in their hands. And as we said before, the books will be flying from under the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Everyone will be uh, raising the right hand. People, they, they know if they got this uh, by their left hand, then they are going to Jahannam. And if they got it with the right, if, if, if they got it with the right hand, they will go to Jannah. So they don't want to go to Jahannam. They are raising their right hand. They don't want to raise the left hand. So what do they do? They, they hide the left hand behind them and they, right, they, 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 they raise the right hand. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, فَأَمَّا مَنْ أُوْتِيَ كِتَابَهُ بِيَمِينِهِ فَسَوْفَ يُحَاسَبُ حِسَابًا يَسِيرًا وَيَنْقَلِبُ إِلَىٰ أَهْلِهِ مَسْرُورًا The one who will get the book with the right hand, they will have a very easy hisab. And they will go back to their families happy. وَأَمَّا مَنْ أُوْتِيَ كِتَابَهُ وَرَاءَ ظَهْرِهِ those, those who will get their books uh, from behind their back, because they will be hiding their left hand behind their back, so the books will fly and fall into their hidden left hand behind their back. They will ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to destroy them, to kill them instead of going to Jahannam. So some people will get with the right hand and some people will get with the left hand, and everyone will have the chance to read everything, to read everything. And remember, everyone who will see the deeds, you know, if, if you tell anyone like about something that happened uh, 10 years ago, you remember 10 years ago, we met at, uh, at this place and you told me this, I don't remember. I don't remember that because it is 10 years ago. Maybe you will not remember the person even. And you cannot verify if this person is telling the truth or lying. But Yawm Al-Qiyamah, when you read your book, you will be able to remember everything. Whatever is written here, you will remember it as, as it was. It, it has happened today. You have said this today. You did this today. And no one will claim that something that is written in the book is not correct. And you will have all the time to study and read everything and remember everything. And then only Muslims, this is only for Muslims. So for Kuffar, you will not get their books. But after they confess that the, 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 the prophets uh, have given them the message. After they confess that, they will not, uh, the, 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 uh, and, 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 they, and they did not believe, they will go to Jahannam. And how they will confess, 
every prophet, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will call the prophets and ask every prophet, have you given the message to your people? Did you do your mission? And he will say yes. And then Allah will ask his people, the kuffar, did he give you the message? They will say, no, he didn't. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask the prophet, who will support you? Who will support your argument? Then the prophet will say, Muhammadun wa ummatu, Muhammad and his nation. They will confirm and support me. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask us, the Muslims, did this prophet give the message? Did he do his mission? Did he complete his mission? We will say, yes, ya Allah, he did. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask us, how did you know? We will say to Allah in the Quran, Allah, you told us in the Quran that all prophets have completed their mission and given their messages. And this is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, وَفِي هَذَا لِتَكُونُوا شُهَدَاءَ عَلَى النَّاسِ وَيَكُونَ الرَّسُولُ عَلَيْكُمْ شَهِيدًا وَفِي هَذَا لِتَكُونُوا شُهَدَاءَ عَلَى النَّاسِ For you to be witnesses on the, for, on the other nations, the deeds of other nations, يَوْمَ الْقِيَمَةِ So this is an owner to the nation of Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم. And who will be witness on our deeds? It's Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم. After it will be proven that every prophet have, has uh, given the message and his people, the kuffar of his people will confess that yes, they got the message, but they denied. Then the kuffar will fall in Jahannam. No sirat for them, no bridge. They will just fall on Jahannam. Those who worshiped whatever idols, those who worshiped the cross, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will, will make a big cross for them to appear and, and, and move, and they will move after it. They have no choice. Their, their feet will move, even if they don't want to move. And this cross will move towards Jahannam. And they will move, they will be forced to move. And the cross will fall in Jahannam, and they will fall in Jahannam after it. Following it, those who were worshipping statues, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will let their statues come at the front of them and they will move towards Jahannam and they will move following their gods that, that they worship. Statues, people, animals, Everyone who was worshipping something else other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bring this thing and this thing will move towards Jahannam and those people will move following this thing until it falls into Jahannam and they will be following these gods falling into Jahannam. And this will be the end for the, the, end for the kuffar. Then it comes to the believers from all nations, the nation of Muhammad وسلم, and the Muslims from other nations. The books will fly from under the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Some people will get with the right hand, some people will get with the left hand. So who will get with the left hand? They are also Muslims. So not all Muslims will get with the right hand. Some Muslims will get with the, left, with the left hand. And everyone will be able to read the deeds. Why didn't the kuffar get their books as well? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَغْفِرُ أَنْ يُشْرَكَ بِهِ وَيَغْفِرُ مَا دُونَ ذَلِكَ لِمَنْ يَشَاءُ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not forgive that you do shirk. If you are kafir, this cannot be forgiven. إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَغْفِرُ أَنْ يُشْرَكَ بِهِ 
وَيَغْفِرُ مَا دُونَ ذَلِكْ لِمَنْ يَشَاءُ Anything below this مَا دُونَ ذَلِكْ وَيَغْفِرُ مَا دُونَ ذَلِكْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can forgive anything below this لِمَنْ يَشَاءُ to those whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decides. But kuf, no forgiveness. So for those who died as kuffar, denying the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, those will fall in Jahannam and there is no books for them because it doesn't matter how many good deeds they have done. They will go to Jahannam anyways. But for those kuffar, for example, who were very bad in dunya, and for those kuffar who were, yes, they were kuffar, but they were good to people in dunya, then they will have less adab. Because Jannah is grades, and Jahannam is different levels. Not everyone in Jahannam is, is having the same adab. But the kuffar, all of them, will be staying in Jahannam for good. Because they denied Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They denied Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when we talk about the kuffar who will stay in Jahannam for good, these are two types. Those who knew the truth, and they knew that it is the truth, and they refused. They knew that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah and Allah is their creator. And the Quran is from Allah and they refused to follow it. So they deserve to stay in Jahannam for good. The second, those who did not care to look for their creator. Who is your creator? I don't care. I just want to live and enjoy. Look for where, where did you come from? Who created your body? Why don't you search? Why don't you read? Doesn't it worth it? No, it doesn't worth it. I will just live the day. This is the second type. But for those who cared to find the truth and they couldn't find it because they were living in a place they didn't hear about Islam or they uh, heard bad things. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will do the judgment yawm al for those people in a fair way. Those who did the effort to reach to the truth, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not let their effort to be lost because they did their effort. And we mentioned the story of Zayd ibn Amr several times. He did not, he died before Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam start making da'wah. And the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that he will be in Jannah. He died as not Muslim. But he did his effort to find the truth. Other than those the kuffar who will fall in Jahannam, then for the Muslims, for the believers, from the nation of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the nation of Isa alayhi salam, the nation of Musa alayhi salam, everyone, every Muslim, they will get their books, they will read their books. And Yawm al-Qiyamah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, تعرج الملائكة والروح إليه في يوم كان مقداره خمسين ألف سنة. الله سبحانه وتعالى said about the length of يوم القيامة خمسين ألف سنة. Fifty thousand years. So there will be a lot of time. And it is by the measures of Akhira, it is 50 days. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَإِنَّ يَوْمًا عِنْدَ رَبِّكَ كَأَلْفِ سَنَةٍ مِمَّا تَعُدُّونَ One day 
for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is equivalent to 1,000 years from what you count on earth. So in Akhirah, when we are standing at the front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, one day in Akhirah will be equivalent to 1,000 years in dunya. But Yawm Al-Qiyamah is 50,000 years, which means that it will look, it will have the length of 50 days, 50 Akhira days. And then after Yawm Al-Qiyamah, which is our first day uh, uh, after, uh, after uh, uh, we are brought back alive, this will be the longest one. And then other days, inshallah, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us mercy and we go to Jannah, all other days in Jannah will be the normal length of one day in Akhirah. And if it is measured in dunya, it is 1,000 years. But our feeling of it, it will be one day. But the first day is the longest one, 50 days, 50,000 years. Why? Because there, is, there will be a lot of things. There will be hisab for everyone. Some people will go to Jannah. Some people will go to Jahannam. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make hisab for all people at the same time. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make hisab to all people at the same time. Some Sahaba said, Ya Rasulullah, how? How can Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talk to all of us at the same time? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not like us. So Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he, he knows that people will not be able to understand this. This is out of our, this is beyond our capabilities, our mind capabilities. So Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the same way that he gives rizq to, ev to all people at the same time, he will make hisab for them at the same time. And this is after everyone reads the book. So you will have all the time to read because it's 50 days, 50,000 years. And then everyone will be called by name. Everyone will be called by name. The prophets will have hisab. Their people will have hisab, the Muslims of their people. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us about different situations of people who will stand at the front of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala for hisab. There are two types of people. Those who, get, who got their, their books with the right hand and those who got their books with the left hand. Those who got their books with the right hand, they will have an easy hisab, easy discussion with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And those who get, got their books with the left hand, they will have a difficult hisab. And they will have azab after that. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us the difference between the easy hisab and the difficult hisab. Uh, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Laysa ahadun yuhasabu yawm al-qiyamati illa halak. Hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari, reported by Aisha radiallahu an. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Laysa ahadun yuhasabu yawm al-qiyamati illa halak. Anyone who is questioned yawm al-qiyamah is doomed. This person will be going to Jahannam. Then Aisha radiallahu anha said, 
يا رسول الله أليس قال الله تعالى فأما من أوتي كتابه بيمينه فسوف يحاسب حسابا يسيرا She said يا رسول الله didn't Allah سبحانه وتعالى said those who will get their books with the right hand they will have an easy حساب easy questioning then the Nabi صلى الله عليه وسلم said إنما ذلك العرض إنما ذلك العرض they will be just it will be a, uh, they will be presented to Allah سبحانه وتعالى وليس أحد يناقش الحساب يوم القيامة إلا عذب anyone who will have an argument يوم القيامة this is a sign that this person will have عذاب to describe it more those who will have an easy hisab, what is the meaning? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you will stand at the front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, you will not see him, but you will hear. You will hear the voice that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will talk to you. And the beginning of every hisab, of every hisab, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will mention his blessings to you. What Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed you with, your life, your body, your wealth, your health, your children, everything, your job, position everything Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will tell you didn't I give you this didn't I give you this didn't I give you this and you will confirm yes yes and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may also ask you about some critical situations in your life when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved you. If you have been poor and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave you a job and you became rich, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will remind you of this. If you have been sick, having pain, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave you shifa. If you did not have children and you was about to lose hope and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed you with a child, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may remind you with this. All the blessings and all the difficult situations that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, uh, solved for you, the big problems, and you will confirm everything. Then, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask you, what have you done with these blessings? What Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have given to you, what have you done? What did you use? How did you use your health? How did you use your knowledge? How did you use your wealth? What did you do? And you will have to answer for that. So everyone needs to prepare these answers, these uh, answers, because you will be asked these questions. And the proof that you will be asked about what have you done with these blessings is what the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi said, Yawm al -qiyamah. The first three people that Jahannam fire will start burning will start burning by them. They are Muslims. One of them, he was Hafil, memorizing Quran. One of them, memorizing Quran and teaching Quran and Islam to people. One of them, he was rich and giving a lot of money to poor people. And one of them, he was doing jihad fi sabirillah, fighting 
and people think that he's doing it for the sake of Allah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bring them for hisab, will tell them, remind them about his blessings, what he has given to them, and will ask, what have you done with these things? Then the one who was alim, hafiz, he will say, Ya Allah, I learned Islam and Quran, and I taught Islam and Quran for you to people. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say, Kathabt. You lied, you, you did this for people to say, MashaAllah, he's hafiz, he's alim. Not for me. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will tell the, the angels to take him to Jahannam. And the one who was rich and was very generous, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will tell him, what have you done with these blessings? He will say, I used my wealth in every way you like, Ya Allah, for you. I help the poor, I built schools, Quran schools, I'll help the orphans for you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say, Kathabt, you lied. You did this for people to say, MashaAllah, he's generous, he's kareem, he's a good man. And they have said, you got what you wanted. And Allah will tell the angels to take him to Jahannam. Another one, who was doing jihad, fighting, and he lost his life in the battle. And he will say, I did jihad in your path, fi sabirillah, and I lost my life for you. Allah will say, Kathabt, you lied. You did all of this so that people say that he is brave. And they make a documentary about you. They build a statue for you. And he did. And Allah will ask, will tell the angels to take him to Jahannam. So this will happen with everyone. What have you done with your with the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And you have to answer this question. After this, you will have your book with you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask. You to open the book and read. Now back to the difference between the good ones and the bad ones. The ones who got with the right hand and the, one, the ones who got with the left hand. The ones who got with the right hand, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask you, inshallah, all of us are like this, to open the book and start reading. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in the hadith reported by Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu that for those when they stand at the front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for hisab, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will put a border between them and the other people. So the others will not hear what is being said. No voice. Sound proof. Allah will ask you to read yourself. You will start reading. Some of what you see are hasanat and some are sayyat. It is not, the book is not uh, divided by like first half is for hasanat and second half is for sayyat. According to the description in the hadith, it will be timely. So there can be one page and in the same page, some good deeds and some bad deeds because maybe in the same day you did some good things and some bad things. What is this book? It is the book that has been written by the angels, the two angels who are writing now. Now they are, there are two angels writing your good deeds and bad deeds. So now you are attending this lecture. If you are attending this lecture and listening to what I'm saying now and spending this time for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then the angel on the right is writing this. These are hasanat. 
you are listening to an Islamic lecture for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the same for me, I'm giving this lecture. Am I giving this lecture to you for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or for you to say, mashallah, his sheikh is giving us a lecture. If it is for the sake of Allah, it will be written by the angel on the right side. If it is for you to say that I am a good person and I am sheikh, then it will be written in the, by the left angel, by, in the, in the sayyid. So those angels are always with you. They are writing everything. And you will get this book, Yawm Al-Qiyamah, the, 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 the writing of these angels, and you will read it at the front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yawm al will it, be, will it be a paper book or a tablet or whatever? It will be something that has everything you have done. It doesn't matter what material it will be from, but it will contain everything and you will be able to read it and you will be able to carry it. So Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala will put a border between the good person and the other people so they will not be able to hear anything. And Allah will ask you to read your book and you will read the good deed, the hasana. When you read it, you will be happy that this hasana is in your book. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask, do you remember this one? You will say, yes, ya Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say, I accept it from you. I accept it from you. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, not everything will be accepted. Everything uh, written by the angels, if it is for Allah, it will be accepted. If it is not for Allah, it will not be accepted. Because the one who will know what is in your heart is only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So maybe I did a mistake when I, when I talked about the one who is giving a lecture that the angel in the right can write it if, uh, if it is for Allah and the angel in the left will, will write it if it is not for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They will not know. They can see what is happening at the front of them. They don't know what is in your heart. They are also creatures. Only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows your intention. The angels, they don't know. They are creatures like us. They will write what they see. Of course, they will know if, for example, if someone is giving a lecture and they will hear him saying in advance, oh, now I have to go and give this lecture to those people. I really hate this, for example. So they will know for certain that he's not doing it for Allah. He's doing it just to get something else. But if nothing uh, uh, appears to them that this person is munafiq, is, is hypocrite, or is doing it for people, then they will write it in the hasanat side because this is what they see and what they hear. But who knows if it is really for, our, for Allah or not? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows. So when you read... And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say, I accept it from you. Qabiltuha mink. You will be very happy because it is accepted. And you will do sujood thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say, Irfa' ra'sak waqra' kitabak. Raise your head and continue reading your book. And then you will say one sayi'ah, one bad deed. And every one of us has. We all have some good deeds and some bad deeds. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, you will see, he will see the sayi'ah, the person. And his face will become black. Black here doesn't mean that it will become uh, black in color, but the person's face will be terrified.
will be in fear and his heart beats will become fast and maybe he will be shaking if it is a big sin then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say do you remember this he will say yes ya Allah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say غفرتها لك I forgive it for you then the person will be very happy and will make sujood thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala again will say ارفع رأسك وقرأ كتابك raise your head and continue reading and it will be like this for the good deed I accept it for the bad deed I forgive it and one more thing some of the bad deeds for some people they will not be shown and this is called al-afu al-afu this is the difference between the two words al-maghfira and al-afu oh, both in English, they mean forgiveness, but there are two types of forgiveness. al maghfirah is that you see the sin, the bad deed in your book, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells you, do you remember this? And you are afraid, you are terrified, you are shaking. And you will say, yes, ya Allah, I remember it. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say you are I forgive it for you so this is al maghfira this is the the first type of forgiveness al maghfira what is al afu al afu is that you don't see it in your book it is not there what is the proof in nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam said this in in one hadith let's see uh, reported by Abu Dharr radiallahu anhu. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Rajulun yu'ta bihi yawm al-qiyamah. One man will be brought yawm al-qiyamah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Fayuqal, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say, I'ridu alayhi sigara dhunubih warfa'u anhu kibaraha. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will tell the angels, present to him the, his small deeds, small bad deeds, and hide the big ones. So after the bad deeds, the small bad deeds are presented, it will be said, you have done this in that day, you have done that in that day, in this day you did this, you said this, you did this, you said this. He will say yes, 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 yes. Cannot deny anything. And he's thinking about what? He's thinking about the big things. Because all of these are small. And he knows that he did some really bad things. So he's saying yes about the small ones. And he know, and he thinks that the big ones are coming. So Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, لا يستطيع أن ينكر He cannot deny anything. وهو مشفق من كبار ذنوبه أن تعرض عليه. And he's very terrified about his big deeds, his, 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 his bad deeds, his big sins, when it comes to, for the angels to tell him about his bad deeds, the big ones. But he doesn't hear that. And they finish and they did not. Uh, he did not hear about the bad deeds. And then he said, Rabbi qad amiltu ashya la araha huha huna. He will say, Ya Allah, I did some bad deeds I did not hear, I did not see in my book. And the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa smiled when he said that 
that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made afu for these things. And this is the, the second type of forgiveness that you don't see this in your book. And this is why the, the very famous dua of Laylatul Qadr, anyone remembers it? Dua Laylatul Qadr? Can anyone say it? If we think in Ramadan, in one night of Ramadan, that this is Laylatul Al-Qadr, what dua should we say? Allah mina inna kafun Yes, mashallah. Jazakallah khair. Allahumma inna ka'afuun tuhibbu al-afwa fa'afu anni. So we are asking for what? For afu. We don't say Allahumma inna ka'afuun tuhibbu al-maghfira fa'afir li. This, if you are asking for maghfira. But we don't say Allahumma inna ka'afuun tuhibbu al-maghfira fa'afir li. But we say Allahumma inna ka'afuun. Afuun. You are the one who is making afu. تُحِبُّ الْعَفُو You like to make عفو فَعْفُ عَنِّي فَعْفُ عَنِّي I want the عفو the best مغفرة the best, the best forgiveness I don't want even to see these sins in my book يوم القيام So this is the value of this dua uh, So when, when it means when when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes afu to this sin, you will not even be subjected to this situation of reading it and being afraid, will it be forgiven or not? And then Allah tells you it's, it is forgiven, but you have been already afraid and terrified. But if it is not written at all, then you will not be subjected to this situation. It is just not there, it's not there. But for the hasanat, nothing will be forgotten. Everything will be there. Only for the sayyah, only for the bad deeds. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can give you some afu so that everything is, or some things are deleted. They are not there. So it will be like this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will just remind you. Do you remember this? Yes, I accept it. Do you remember this? Yes, I forgive it. This is if the, the, the easy hisab. No questioning. No questioning. For the others, wal billah. Al hisab al asir. The difficult hisab that the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, whoever will have this hisab will have azab yawm al qiyam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask them also, will, will the, the same way, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will first remind by their, by, by his blessings subhanahu wa ta'ala to this person. Life, uh, uh, health, wealth, everything. What have you done? And he or she has to answer. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will tell, read your book. This person's talking will not be isolated from others. So others will be able to hear. The first one, People will not hear anything, so no one will know about his or her sins. But the other one, everyone will hear. It will be a scandal for those who were, you know, pretending to be good Muslims. But they were munafiqs, so everyone will, will know. It will be a scandal for them. And when it comes to the sayyat of those people, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask, do you remember this? If say yes, then Allah will say, why did you do this? Why? 
if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks you why, then it is a difficult hisab. Why did you do this harm? And then this is the sign that the hisab is difficult. For the other easy hisab, Allah will not ask you why. But for the others, why did you do this? Didn't you know it is haram? Why did you do it? And the same for the other things. And for some of those people, when they find that it is getting difficult for them, we will start denying some things. You remember this? No, I did not do it. Because it's becoming too much. And the person knows that the hisab is becoming difficult, is going to jahan, and so will start lying. Maybe it will work. I did not do this. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say, the angels wrote this book, this book. Did they do volume to you? Will say yes. They are liars. I don't trust them. Ya Allah, you promised not to do volume to me, that I am safe from oppression. And I don't accept those angels as witnesses. Then Allah will ask, who do you accept as witnesses for your deeds? He will say, only me. Only me. No one else. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, you are granted this. No one else. But it will be your organs who will speak. And this is the situation where someone's organs will speak. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah Yaseen, أَعْضُوا لَا مَشْتَوْرِي الْيَوْمَ نَخْتِمُ عَلَىٰ أَفْوَاهِهِمْ وَتُكَلِّمُنَا أَيْدِيهِمْ وَتَشْهَدُ أَرْجُلُهُمْ بِمَا كَانُوا يَكْسِبُونَ الْيَوْمَ نَخْتِمُ عَلَىٰ أَفْوَاهِهِمْ Today we block their mouth. You will not be able to speak. You asked for it, for this, okay. Now your tongue will stop. Their hands will talk. Their legs will witness, will, test, will give a testimony, will testify. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in in Surah Fussilat, A'udhu Billahi Mishtar Al-Rajim. Hatta idha ma jauha shahid alayhim sam'uhum wa absaruhum wa juluduhum bima kanu ya'maloon. When they come and they say that they request this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make their shahid alayhim who will, who, will, who will testify for, uh, against them? Sam'uhum, their ears. Wa'abusaruhum, their eyes. Wa'juluduhum, their skins. Bima kanu ya'malu. Wa'qalu lijuludihim lima shahidtum alayna. After their organs speak about their sins. Those people will say, then after they finish, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will release their tongue so they will be able to speak again. Then that person will look at his body or her body, hands, legs. They said about all the dirty things that he or she has done. As, and the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, in the hadith, will look at his organs and will say, Suhqan lakum, curse you, curse you. 
I have been arguing for you. Because these hands are, if he goes to the Jahannam, those hands will be burned, those legs will be burned. I have been arguing for you, for you, my body, not to be burned. Why? Why did you do that? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَقَالُوا لِجُلُودِهِمْ لِمَا شَهِدْتُمْ عَلَيْنَا He will tell their organs, why did you testify against us? لِمَا شَهِدْتُمْ عَلَيْنَا قَالُوا أَنْطَقَنَ اللَّهُ الَّذِي أَنْطَقَ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ You will say it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who let us speak. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can make anything speak. وَهُوَ خَلَقَكُمْ أَوَّلَ مَرَّةٍ وَإِلَيْهِ تُرْجَعُونَ And he created you from the beginning. And you knew that to him you are returning. So this is for the people who will have difficult hisab. This will be the situation at the front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, to make a clear difference, no, actually this was not a hadith, but one of the tabi'een, he said that, knowing from the collection of a hadith, the difference between the good situation at the front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the bad situation at the front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said, for the good Muslim, the mu'min, to come to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is like a person who traveled long time, a man who traveled long time, away from his wife and children. Months for years, and now he's coming back to them. He's so happy that he will see them. They are so happy that they will see him. He's missing them a lot, and they are missing him a lot. This will be the meeting between the good Muslims and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you are a good Muslim that you have praying, doing effort to pray, doing effort to learn Quran, spending a lot of your money fi sabirillah. For whom you are doing all of this? For whom? For whom you are praying in the night, reading the Quran, fasting the long summer days, spending your money, when you go to Rima or Kiwi, you know that these are har haram things you cannot buy. And you have to go to the halal shop even buy more expensive. For whom? For whom? Everything is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, Allah, when you meet, and you have been doing all of this for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you will be waiting for this moment, happy, because you have been doing a lot of things for him. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also will make you happy with what you have done for him. For the others, this will be like a slave who ran away from his master, a slave that his master told him to do a job. Take this money, buy this stuff and do this job and come back. So what he have done, what, he, what, what, what has he done? He took the money and ran away, stole in his master's money and ran away from him. And then his master sent some people to catch him and they caught him. Now they brought him to his master together with the money that he stole him. How his coming to his master will look like. He will be terrified 
because he knows what he has done and his master will be angry. So he will be terrified, waiting for the punishment and his master angry, waiting for, to, for, for to, waiting to punish him. So he knows that he will be punished and his master will punish him. This is how a bad person will come to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What he has been doing or she has been doing in this dunya. Knew the haram and did it. Knew the farb and did not do it. You knew that you need to pray, but you didn't. You knew that you need to give the zakah and you didn't. You knew that this is haram and you took it. You knew that this is haram and you did it. People were reminding you and you didn't listen to them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent you many signals that you are in the wrong way and you ignored. You know what you have done. And when you come to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you will not be waiting for this. You don't want this moment to happen because you know what you have done. And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala meets you, he knows what you have done. You will not find an easy situation for those who are like this. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from such a situation. So this is al-ardu al-Allah. People meeting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for hisab yawm al -qiyam. The easy hisab will be always short. And the difficult hisab will be long. The easy hisab will be always short. And the difficult hisab will be long. The ones who will have easy hisab, they will have like good news from the beginning. From the time of death. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us, when it is your time to die, for the good movements, there will be angels, the angel of death will come, and there will be angels wearing white clothing with nice faces, bringing a coffin from Jannah with a nice smell. And while for the others, there will be angels who are ugly. Not, not all angels are beautiful and very tough. And their faces are very terrifying. And you will be bringing a coffin from Jahannam, a coffin of fire. And then when you go to the grave, it will be either part of Jannah or part of Jahannam. And then when you go out of the grave, Some people will be sweating and some people will be, be under the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yawm al -qiyam. And the last thing before he said is to get your book with the right hand or the left hand. Uh, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us that the difficult situations before he said they're, they're, these situations can be taking away some of the sins of the people. You see the forgiveness, the, the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, every harm, any single harm that happens to you in dunya, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes away some of your sins. So if you get sick, if you get sad, if you lose uh, something precious, if you are in a sorrow, if you are terrified, these difficult times, these hard times, and the hardship that you feel, whether it is in your body or your job, in your whatever hardship you face, and you have pain, 
either mentally or physically, this will be Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make it a reason to forgive some of your sins, including some situations in the grave. So the good Muslims in general, their grave will be part of Jannah. But it has been said in some ahadith that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can make some things for the good Muslims in their grave to take some of their sins. One hadith in Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, one man entered the grave. After he entered the grave and he saw fire in the grave. Fire. And this fire caught him and it was very hot and he fainted and this is for his soul in the grave. So it was very painful, some adab in the beginning. And then this fire went away. And he saw the angels ask him, why? Why did this happen? Why did I have this adab? Then the answer him, because of two situations in your life, two things you have done. You prayed one salah without wudu. One salah, you prayed without wudu. The second, one day you saw a person who is oppressing another person. One person who is strong and another one who is weak. And the strong one is oppressing the weak one. And you could support the weak and you didn't. You could support the weak one and you didn't. Because of these two situations, you got this fire in your grave. It's better in the grave than in Jahannam. So this was a good man who was praying and supporting the, the weak people and doing sadaqah. But because of these two, he did them and he did not make tawbah from them. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to clean him from the very beginning of akhirah, not to wait until yawm al qiyam Because the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Al-Qabru awwalu manzilin min manazil al-akhirah. The grave is the first stage in akhirah. If it was easy, what is coming after it, it will be easier. If it was difficult, what is coming after it, it will be more difficult. So it can happen that in the stages before Hisab, the difficulties in these stages, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can make a reason to forgive some of your sins so that when you come and be presented to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then your Hisab is easy. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can clean you from your sins in dunya, and this is the best to be cleaned from everything in dunya before you move to akhir because any cleaning in dunya is easier than any cleaning in akhirah starting from qabr because akhirah starts by by qabr not by yawm al qiyam the first stage of akhirah is al qabr the grave once you die then your akhirah starts akhirah doesn't start by yawm al qiyam just when you die then this is your akhir dunya is finished any adab that you have in dunya is easier than adab that you have in akhir. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from all adab in akhir and grant us an easy hisab and protect us from the difficult hisab and the adab of jahan. Any questions? نيك دعاء إن شاء الله يا ربنا لك الحمد كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك وعظيم سلطانك اللهم صل على محمد في الأولين وصل على محمد في الآخرين وصل على محمد في الملأ الأعلى إلى يوم الدين 
اللهم اقسم لنا من خشيتك ما تحول به بيننا وبين معصيتك ومن طاعتك ما تبلغنا به جنتك ومن اليقين ما تهون به علينا مصائب الدنيا ومتعنا اللهم بأسماعنا وأبصارنا وقواتنا ما أحييتنا وجعله الوارث منا واجعل ثأرنا على من ظلمنا وانصرنا على من عادانا ولا تجعل مصيبتنا في ديننا ولا تجعل الدنيا أكبر همنا ولا مبلغ علمنا ولا منتهى أملنا ولا تسلط علينا من لا يرحمنا اللهم اشف مرضانا ومرضى المسلمين وارحم موتانا وموت المسلمين واكشف الهم والغم والكرب عنا وعن المسلمين اللهم اكفنا بحلالك عن حرامك وأغننا بفضلك عمن سواك ولا تحوجنا ولا تذلنا إلا إليك اللهم انصر إخواننا المجاهدين في كل مكان وثبت أقدامهم وانصرهم على القوم الكافرين ربنا اغفر لنا ولإخواننا الذين سبقونا بالإيمان ولا تجعل في قلوبنا غلا للذين آمنوا ربنا إنك رؤوف رحيم ربنا لا تزغ قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب ربنا اغفر لنا ولوالدينا وللمؤمنين يوم يقوم الحساب وصلي لهم على محمد وآله وصحابته وتابعيه بخير وأحسان إلى يوم الدين آمين